White and Centre's Creativity Connects channel. Uh, today we're going to be making vegan chocolate brownies um, with our new volunteer Lauren. Um, I'm really looking forward to it because I personally couldn't get any eggs this week so I'm going to be giving that a go as well and seeing if we can make them. Remember um, to subscribe to our channel to check out new videos from Lauren, vegan recipes, but also videos from our other staff and volunteers coming out over the next few days. So subscribe on YouTube channel and um, I hope you enjoy it. Bye bye. Hi there, uh, my name's Lauren um, and today I'm going to be making some vegan chocolate brownies. Um, first thing I'm going to say is that this is not my recipe. Um, I am not creative enough to make my own baking recipes. Um, so this is taken from someone called uh, Amy Carlin. Um, we do be able to find that online. Um, and I probably said her name wrong. Um, I've made a few tweaks to the original uh, just based on my own personal preferences and you know what I have available in the cupboard. Um, but it's mostly stuck to the original. So all the credit should go to her. <laughs> um, so, before, so vegan baking can um, be a little bit daunting for some people um, if you've not tried it before. Um, mainly because you have to substitute two really key ingredients in baking which is eggs and butter. Um, now butter is actually quite easy to substitute. Um, I tend to just use margarine, like this sort of thing. Um, you've got to watch out because some margarines do have a bit of um, milk in them. Um, but a lot don't, like Flora for example, all of the Flora brand now um, is suitable for vegans. Um, you can see the little logo there, so that's good. Um, there's also ones like Vitalite, Pure, um, and some supermarkets have like, started doing their own brand now as well. So it's actually it's quite easy to come by this kind of thing. Um, eggs are a little bit more tricky. Um, I didn't actually realise this until I went vegan and started doing vegan baking, um, but eggs are actually a raising agent, so they um, help cakes and things go light and fluffy. Um, so there are alternatives you can use to eggs to do that sort of thing. Um, for example, um, something called aquafaba, but um, I'm not going to really go into that. I'm going to cheat a little bit today <laughs> um, and make something that's not supposed to be light and fluffy at all, which is brownies, which we know are supposed to be quite dense and squidgy and yeah, we don't really want them too cakey, um, otherwise we'd just make a cake, I suppose. Um, so three things I've done um, before we get started uh, is wash my hands, um, I have preheated the oven to um, 180 degrees, um, I've just done that first so that it is nice and hot by the time we get the uh, brownies in the oven, um, and I have assembled my ingredients, which is Definitely something I should do more often because, um, yeah, scrabbling around the cupboard for things halfway through a recipe is kind of annoying. So, um, glad I've done that. So, what have we got? We've got uh, 250 grams of plain white flour, this sort of thing. Um, I've actually used the last of the flour that I had for this recipe, um, so let's hope it turns out well. Um, and then we've got a teaspoon of baking powder. Um, pinch of salt, um, a banana, um, and this will be our egg substitute, um, obviously it's not got any raising properties, but as I said, we don't need that for this recipe, um, it's more of a binding agent, so it just sticks the whole mixture together. Um, we also need uh, 230 grams of caster sugar, just the white plain caster sugar like this, I've used brown sugar before I think as well, and it seems to work okay, so it's, it's kind of flexible. Um, and we need a vanilla extract, just a tablespoon of that. Um, we need 200 grams of dark chocolate in total, so I've used um, Bourneville. Um, the original recipe actually says you should use um, like super dark, kind of very high quality chocolate, and you know, like the green and blacks kind of stuff. Um, but actually, I've tried that and I prefer it with this. I think it's just sweeter and creamier, and I just think it makes the brownies taste a bit nicer and gives them a better texture. But um, that's all personal preference. Um, uh, so, yeah, part of that will be melted into the brownies, and part of it will be used for chocolate chips. Um, so, we also need the margarine, like I said, um, we'll need four tablespoons of that. Um, and one tablespoon of golden syrup. Um, and that's another thing that I've sort of deviated from the original recipe a little bit because um, they said to use agave nectar, which um, I don't really have in my cupboard ever. Um, and this seems to work just as well. It's only one tablespoon, so I, I doubt it makes too much difference. Um, I think that's all the ingredients. I've also uh, pre-lined a baking tray for the brownies. Um, 
<laughs> you see, I'm not very good at measuring, like, it doesn't sort of go up the top, that's not the end of the world. Um, so yeah, just whack a bit of oil in the pan, um, just a little bit, so that the baking paper sort of sticks up to the sides like that, just rub it around. Um, so that's ready uh, to go as well. Okay, let's get started. Um, so I've already measured out um, the flour into this bowl, big bowl here. Um, so that's 250 grams, like I said. I'm going to add um, one teaspoon of baking powder, if I can get it open. I shouldn't really do that. Um, okay, get nice and flat, plop that in. And the pinch of salt, I believe, goes in at this point as well, yeah. I'm never really sure why salt. They always say a pinch of salt in bakes. Um, is that a pinch? I don't know. Um, and, you know, it's not enough to make a difference to the taste, I, I shouldn't have thought, but um, it must do something. So I'll pop that to one side, because um, we'll need that in a bit. So next up is uh, mashing the banana. So, again, <laughs> here's what I prepared earlier. Um, mashed banana looks a bit gross, actually. Um, so you just mash it with a fork um, until it's, like, fairly incorporated. You don't really want loads of big lumps, but a few little lumps, and it's not the end of the world. Um, Put that, my little demonstration banana away. Um, so into that mixture goes the sugar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that on the scales here, set it to zero. Yep. And then I'm going to pour in the sugar. So yeah, 230 grams. There we go. It always seems like a horrible lot of sugar, like. That's a lot of sugar. Um, but never mind. <laughs> um, but it's fine. That's why it tastes good, hey. Um, so yeah, mix that up. Um, it looks like it's not going to mix at first. It's like, well, there's a, a lot of sugar and not that much banana. But it, trust me, it will uh, mix up eventually. Um, and what will help with that is at this point to put the um, one tablespoon of vanilla extract in. Because that's a little bit more liquid and mix it in. Again, a tablespoon of vanilla extract does seem a lot, but um, that's what the recipe said, so I, I just trust the recipe. I don't like to, uh, you know, deviate too much. All right, so I'm keep mixing that. Yeah, you can see why it's an egg replacer, really, because look, it's kind of like that raw egg consistency. So, um, there you go, it's like, at that. Not not the most appetising thing in the world, but um, so again, that's going to be put to one side. And I have chopped up um, 140 grams out of the 200 grams of chocolate we had, like so. Um, they don't need to be that small pieces because we're going to melt these. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could cut them up smaller and probably melt faster. That would probably be a smart thing to do, but I'm not very patient. So. <laughs> not happened. Um, pan. Anyway, I thought I'd got everything out, but clearly not. Just gonna turn that on. The hob. So yeah, I basically I've got a pan of water, um, which I'm putting on the hob um, to heat up. Um, and what we're going to do is something called a bain marie, which means um, instead of just like chucking chocolate into a pan and melting it that way, you um, you put it on like in a bowl on top of a pan of hot water, and I think that means it just doesn't stick as as much. Um, we're not just going to melt the chocolate actually here. We're going to also add the four tablespoons of vegan margarine. So just scooping them out like that, plopping those in. You don't have to be too accurate here, I don't think. Well, <laughs> mine never am, so, and it seems to, to work okay. Um, on those in there. Lovely. Um, um, oh yes, and we need a, a tablespoon of um, golden syrup at this point as well, in, in with the uh, chocolate and um, butter mix. What I should have done is boiled the kettle um, and then we would have nice hot water ready for this stage but hopefully by the time I've waffled on and this very slow golden syrup has poured into the <laughs> tablespoon 
Um, we'll have like semi warm water which will start melting that chocolate. And oh, that should be enough. There we go. Blob that in. So. Oh god, it's making a bit of a mess. <coughs> right. Um, yeah. So we've got chopped up chocolate with the margarine on top and. Um, some of this golden syrup as well. So I'm just gonna pop that on the pan. Hopefully it's warming up. It's, it's on full heat, so it should be warming up quite soon. Right. Um, I'm probably gonna have to fast forward this bit because it's gonna be pretty slow. Um. What I really like about this recipe is that it's, um, it's really unhealthy. And I think like, that sounds like a really silly thing to say about a chocolate brownie recipe, but I find like a lot of vegan recipes and people's idea of a vegan cake or a vegan sweet are like, oh, it's going to be a bit, bit wholesome, it's going to be raw, it's going to be sugar free, it's going to be oil free, it's going to be made mostly of celery or something. Um, and really, yeah, I mean, that's not the case, it's, as is ev evidenced by this recipe, there's chocolate, there's sugar, there's butter. And it comes out like a really nice, quite decadent, like, treat, which is what I want, really. I don't want something super wholesome and healthy if I'm, if I'm having a treat. And um, I eat healthy most of the time, but it's, I think it's fine to have, you know, <laughs> something a little bit, a little bit unhealthy. Oh, yes, it is actually melting. Oh, my gosh, it's taking forever. Basically, it's like that it's sort of very um yeah very liquidy and very smooth and which is perfect and i'm gonna take it off the little saucepan if i can like so lovely right so i think this is the point where you can add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients i'm gonna have to remember to <laughs> put this in the wash um yeah so um first up we're going to I think we're going to add the uh, banana to the flour, which I prepared earlier. So, here's the banana mixture going in. Lovely. Right. And then the chocolate. Now the bowl is quite hot, so... Hmm, am I going to be able to hold it? Yeah, I am actually. I can handle that. That's good. Lovely. Um, so we're gonna start giving that a bit of a mix. Um, it actually goes, usually, quite um, thick. Like it's like a big ball of um, dough almost, rather than um, your typical, what you expect a cake mix to look like. So, but don't worry, that's, that's fine. That's what it's supposed to look like, I think. So I've mixed it a little bit. Um, you see like this flour is still not quite incorporated but at this point I am going to attempt to tidy up slightly as I go along <laughs> um, but I'm also going to get these chocolate chunks um, in there as well on those in oh, cool it's going everywhere okay lovely um, so that should yeah it's really nice for the chocolate chunks in there like I actually like to keep them it's better, I think, than just like chocolate chips. Like the chunks are, are nice when you come across those. Let's mix it in. Yeah, as you can see, it's like a ball of. <laughs> kind of looks like cookie dough, actually, um, which we all love. So that's good. Just gonna pop that away. So I can now put it in the pan. So I'm just going <laughs> to roll this sort of ball of dough into the pan, like so. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty heavy. Um, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're going to obviously have to like spread it out to the corners. Oh my god, it's actually thicker than normal, I think. Christ, what have I done? Hopefully this turns out right. Um, oh, one other thing that's in the original recipe is, um, I think she puts walnuts in, like chopped up walnuts to go through it, like as well as the chocolate chips. Um, 
I really am not a fan of uh, nuts in cakes. I just think I don't really like the texture, so I've just left them out. But I mean, you could stick some nuts in. I think it was like probably about the same amount as the uh, chocolate chips there, so probably like 50, 60 grams, something like that, of chopped nuts. That would probably work. Good. Okay, that's, um, that's in. So something on the floor. I'm gonna pop it in the oven. Um, so again, it's another deviation from the original. The recipe states uh, 25 minutes, um, which actually I think is a little bit too long. Um, it goes a little bit, a little bit dry, I think. Um, so I like to check at 15 minutes. Um, stick a little poker in or something like that and see um, see how it's doing. Obviously if it's like pure liquid still, <laughs> then stick it back in for like five minutes. But um, even if it's like a little bit of stuff clinging to the poker, or I mean, to be fair, I just use a, a chopstick. Um, that's fine because actually as it cools down, it really does solidify a bit. So anyway, I'll pop those in the oven. Right, um, I will see you in 15 minutes. I'm back again. Um, so I took the brownies out of the oven um, at 15 minutes, like I said, um, and they seem done. They seem done already. Um, actually, if anything, like a little bit overdone, slightly overdone. Um, but I think it'll be fine. Um, so I sort of, yeah, obviously turned the oven off and all that um, and left them in the pan for a little bit to solidify. Not that long, admittedly, <laughs> because I have no patience whatsoever. So I've just sort of thought, I want to get them out. Um, so I've got this um, little sort of, what do you call it, like a drying rack kind of thing. No, it's, I don't know what it's called, but it's, you know what I mean, it's one of these things. Um, but it's actually <laughs> too small for these brownies. I'll show you them actually. Um, here we go. So there we are. Let's get the light on them. Ooh. Um, so they've got, which I think is a really good, a good sign of a good brownie, is like this skin on top, um, like this sort of crispy bits on top, which I really like. Um, I think that means it's a, it's a good, good brownie. Um, so th this won't fit on there, obviously. The corners are gonna like hang off and probably gonna fall off if um, if we're honest. So what I'm gonna do is, oh Christ, uh, grab one of these like pizza tray things and just pop it on top there. So, um, so there's like holes in it. So I'm hoping that, you know, will <laughs> help it cool down a bit, I don't know. Um, so yeah, the good thing about having the tray um, with the baking paper sort of sticking out, uh, st you know, sticking out the side, is you can grab the paper and use it to like move the brownies. So, I mean, they're, I probably shouldn't move them yet because they're probably too squishy. But I'm just gonna do it anyway. Uh, here we go. Oh, here we go. There we are. Lovely. Um, yeah. So again, what I should do at this point is let them cool so I can cut them. Um, but I really don't have the patience for that, so I'm just going to grab a knife and like cut a little corner off and dry them. The rest of them can obviously cool down and, uh, as they're supposed to. So I'm just going to pop this little corner off here. Oh my god, they are squishy. That's good. It's very good. Very, very good. There we go. Little taste of there. It's probably too hot to eat anyway. Um, so yeah, as you see, it is super fudgy, um, and that will dry a little bit, solidify a little bit as it as it you know cools down, but um, but not too much, hopefully. So it will you know be the perfect brownie, I think. So I'm gonna try a little bit. Mmm, mmm, that is a really good brownie, and I like. It sounds like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but I'm really not because it's not my recipe. I just followed some instructions and messed it up a bit, <laughs> in fact, in various places. So, um, yeah, not blowing my own trumpet here at all. Um, I just think this is an absolutely fantastic brownie. Um, hmm, excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed, in uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that. Um, I might try and make some more videos at some point, if I can get some more flour. Um, but yeah. Hope it, hope you get to make it at home sometime. See you later. Well, um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I also managed to cook along to it and believe it or not, Lauren, they actually don't look bad at all. I'm really pleased with them and um, they're really good. So if anyone else wants to make these brownies, just make it along with the video. 
But if you want to see any of our other content that's coming out, remember to subscribe. And if you've got any ideas about what kind of videos we should be putting up, then just send us a wee email here and we can um, get you involved. Look forward to hearing from you all soon. Bye-bye.